Hey, what's up, guys? I wanted to talk about uh, beating the winter blues. Winter's coming if you live somewhere where it's cold and getting cold right now like it is here in Utah. And I wanted to talk about some strategies, some basics that can be in place to really help you offset if you get sad, um, whether you actually get seasonal affective disorder or you just start to feel not as great, not as lit up about life when it's cold outside. And these are things that have helped me so much. I went through like one of the hardest times of my life in the middle of winter one time, and it turned out to be one of the most exciting, most empowering, amazing times of my life, even though it was really stressful. And these are the things that I did. And the first thing is actually cold exposure, intentional cold exposure. So if you don't follow Wim Hof or you haven't read his book, I really recommend like looking into that, at least just go on YouTube, listen to him on a podcast. I guarantee you're going to be hooked when you start hearing him share the research behind cold therapy and what it can do for us to prevent depression. Um, his wife actually committed suicide and he was in the lowest time of his life and his intuition told him to go out into the cold and he noticed the benefits that he was getting in his mood. And so if you live somewhere where it gets really cold, like here in Utah, you actually are lucky because we can actually do cold showers on the daily and they're actually cold. If you live somewhere like Southern California or Florida, I, you know, even in the dead of winter, I'm like, ah, nice refreshing spring rain. <laughs> it's it doesn't get that cold. But if you live somewhere where the ground is frozen, oh my gosh, the water gets so cold. And it's at first you are going to freak out. But as you get past that and you start to just go into this stoic breath, right? And it's like, I just say, don't think, just do hot. You know, I take my shower hot. <laughs> I don't do the whole thing cold. Um, at the end, I just go cold and I just and I get it all up in my armpits and on my scalp and on the back of my neck and all the places that I'm afraid to let it get. That's where I like that action of saying, I choose this you stress, which is healthy, positive stress, stress that we choose and want. It helps you control your stress response so much. You realize that you don't have to shudder away in fear that you can actually breathe through things when that icy cold storm of life is coming at you. Right? And actually really, really helped me with my thermoregulation too. I cruise around in shorts all winter long because of this. I'm like, I, I used to get cold all the time. Really, really helped me with that. So that's the first thing is intentional cold therapy. Now, yes, I love cold immersions. There's a place up in Park City I go to and they have a cold plunge in their, in their um, spa. But how realistically, how often am I going to do that? Once a month? I'm not going to get that much benefit from that. So for me, cold showers, that's something I can do every day. Or if you're one of those people that have bought like some sort of cold plunge ice bath thing in your house and you're actually going to use it regularly, can be really, really beneficial for keeping your mood up during the winter. Okay, next thing is sunlight. Like how are you going to get it? How are you going to get sunlight in the winter? Because you need it so bad. Have you noticed when you're out in the sun how charged you feel? I've got a podcast coming with Dr. Jack Cruz. Um, it's either this Friday or next. And he is talking about how there's 900 chemicals produced in our body from sunlight. It's not just about the vitamin D3. So like, what, what are you going to do? <laughs> are you going to start snowshoeing? Are you going to get, you know, here in Utah, you can get those little chain thingies that you put on your boots. You can hike all winter long with those. I have them for me and all of my kids. It's actually pretty sunny most days here. So how are you going to get sunlight? during the winter. Can you go for a quick walk? Even if it's five minutes, even if it's cold, if the sun is shining during the winter, it's so important. I'm personally, I, I know people have differing opinions on this, but there are some tanning beds that mimic natural sunlight and they scan your skin to make sure that they don't burn you first. There's one at the planet fitness here in Utah. I, can't, I forgot what it's called something with sunlight, but that is an option, you know, some sort of way to get sunlight. Um, and next is sleep. Give yourself the gift of sleep. I can't tell you how many people think they have emotional eating problems or depression and they're just not, I'm like, how, how are you sleeping? They're like, Oh, I don't really sleep that much. I'm like, <laughs> you realize you can't make your neurochemicals for happiness correctly when you're sleep deprived, right? We're just like big babies or big toddlers. We're the same. We just grew up. Have you ever been around a toddler that's sleep deprived? Are they real pleasant to be around? <laughs> no, because they literally can't make the neurochemistry that they need to be happy. So sleep, if your body is asking for more sleep, honor that. Give yourself that gift, you know? And the um, next thing is exercise. Holy cow. 
Do we, are we forgetting how important exercise is for mood? I would say these days, most of the reason I train is for mood and mindset. Like I have all the muscle I want. I'm as lean as I want to be. I don't have anything specific that I'm doing in there from a body composition perspective, except that it's freaking fun. It lights me up. It gets all those neurochemicals for happiness, all those endorphins, your dopamine, norepinephrine goes up and you feel happy, right? So don't forget that. We slowly just go down, 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 down in our neurochemistry when we're not exercising regularly. And they're actually starting to finally prescribe exercise for people in front of antidepressants. Oh my gosh, you might not need a drug <laughs> to be happy. You might just need the basics. You might need to sleep and go get some exercise every day and, and baby step your way. You don't have to go in and crush yourself to death. Just go, go walk, go walk uphill on the treadmill for 15 minutes, you know, and baby step your way into it. It has massive impact on mood. And the last thing is, is, is food. And, and here's what I mean by it. This is what I tell my kids um, in terms of nutrition. I I don't limit my food, my kids' food. Well, okay, that's not true. I will not support McDonald's um, or like Taco Bell. Like I just don't want to support those companies, so I don't get them that. But in terms of like treats or whatever, I don't limit them. But this is what I because I don't want them to get weird, restrictive mindsets with food. But what I tell them is this: I'm like, your body is like a robot that has all these special fuels that it needs, and so when you only eat gas, like gasoline would be like, you know, even sugar is gas. It'll keep you going. Those chips or that soda or candy, that's just gas. But your, your robot needs like all these other things, all these vitamins, minerals, all these things to run properly. And if you're filling up constantly on those other gases that don't have those mixed into it, you get full on those and you miss the opportunity to feed yourself the things that have all the other fuels that you need. So like I, my, I've been saying this for years and years. It's my, you know, what I tell myself all the time, it's be your own mom, eat your real food first. You can have that. Just eat some real food first. And you'll be su surprised so often you don't even really want that much of the junky thing because you're now you're full. You were just hungry, you know? So I trust me, I would love to just eat chips and candy all day. That'd be awesome. I'd, I'd love that life. <laughs> But I just, I'm, I'm like, I know my body, it's self-love. It's like my body needs nutrients, you know, it has all these vitamin and mineral needs that it has amino acids, all these things it needs to run properly. So if you're not nourishing yourself, you're going to feel like crap. You just don't have the building blocks you need to build your mental health, quite frankly. And if you're eating things that are making it hard for your gut to produce serotonin and GABA and some of these things that we need to feel good or you're not eating enough meat or protein or things to, that have tyrosine or meats that have tryptophan for serotonin. Like dopamine and serotonin is like the stuff that all the antidepressants boost, right? And so you can boost those yourself by eating things that don't inflame your gut so they can your gut can make those things and also have the building blocks for them, right? We need amino acids are really freaking important. So as a recap, as winter comes, like make sure get a consistent schedule so you don't get decision fatigue and stress, right? If you're like, okay, at some point I need to exercise. At some point I need to do cold showers. At some point I need to get sunlight. Make a routine and then it just comes on autopilot, right? So like when you take your shower, you just do a 15 to 60 second cold shower at the end. Make the first part of your morning, some part of your morning that you exercise, even if it's just walking one day, but make that set time. This is my time dedicated to exercise. So it's just on autopilot or have set meals, your go-to things that you love eating ready to go. Make sure you just have those things on hand and it just starts getting, getting really easy, you know, and this, these basics and sleeping, you are worthy of sleep, <laughs> right? Remember that your body needs it. It makes everything go up. So these sound so basic, right? But they are the foundation of happiness. You can't, it's so hard to be happy when your neurochemistry is fighting against you, right? So make sure you prioritize these things for yourself. <sighs> yeah. Mental health comes from the gut. Absolutely. It does. And also, and I love that, um, the breath within you, that's another thing, breathing, right? If you feel yourself stressed or anxious, breathe into your diaphragm so much that you feel like you're going to crack your back ribs open. <laughs> That's how I think of it. Your diaphragm kind of goes under your ribs here, right? So 
expand that really big because you have um, receptors, parasympathetic nerve receptors in your lower lungs. Parasympathetic is when we are calm, rest and digest. So, so much of gut issues sometimes is people are like stuck in their sympathetic nervous system. So they're never getting in a digest mode. I have literally had a client recently that did a breath workshop and all of her digestive issues went away from breathing. Okay. She had been to all these gut specialists and had 50 million foods she wasn't supposed to eat. And she finally just started breathing deeply. And she's like, holy crap, <laughs> everything's normal again. Okay, so breath, you have this vagus nerve right between your brain and your gut. And breathing deeply helps that to um, operate correctly. So if you feel yourself anxious, just start breathing in and out of your nose. All right, when we're breathing out of our mouth, what are we usually doing? Running. We're in fight or flight mode. And some of us are stuck doing this during the day. Catch yourself. If you're working, you're all stressed. Are you breathing in and out of your mouth? Your, your physiology is hearing, we are in fight or flight. <laughs> we need to be panicked and we don't have space or a need to be sending blood flow to the gut right now. We got to put send it all to the extremity so you can run. And that makes you makes your heart go faster. makes you feel very anxious. So just check yourself. It's like, oh, how deep am I breathing? And give yourself that. I do it all the time. When I'm on podcasts sometimes, I notice I'm like, dude, I'm feeling anxious right now, right? It's, it's crazy sometimes being in front of like lights and cameras. It's like puts you in a weird space. So you just, I just go, I can just feel myself calm right down. So <laughs> thanks girl. All right. That's it. Make sure you're taking care of those basics for yourself. Right? So often we think what's wrong with me. I, I think I need to go get on some sort of antidepressant or whatever. And it's like, please make sure you check your basics first. Sleep, good food, sunlight, exercise, breathing, and cold therapy is a powerful, powerful antidepressant. So I cannot recommend it enough. All right. That's all guys. Have a great day. Bye.